Hey, welcome back everybody. I have a heart pillow just to remind you that Jesus loves you. If you wanna hear an incredible message from the Word of God about being strong and courageous, come right back. Welcome back, everybody. You know, Jesus does love you, and I'm so glad he does. He loves us all. And, you know, he wants us to be successful. God is for us, not against us. And it seems like, you know, sometimes we're on the road to success, the roads to breakthroughs, and then we face a wall and we face challenges. Well, this message is going to be about God's formula for success. You know, God shows us in his word principles for success. He shows us through people who face challenges and, and what his mind was on it, what he says about it. And so the first person I want to talk about is Joshua. You see, Joshua was an assistant to Moses in the Old Testament. And so Joshua, when saw Moses lead people in the wilderness for 40 years, Joshua saw Moses uh, listen to God and be God's spokesperson. I mean, Joshua was there probably when the Ten Commandments came on the mountain to Moses. And when Moses came down and he was white as snow and, and he, had been, he had been in God's presence, Joshua saw all these incredible things. He was there whenever, uh, you know, before they even went into the wilderness. And, and they came up to a, a roadblock. They, the Israelites, there were, you know, how many ever, I think some, some scholars will say there were, there were over 2 million people between the men and the wives and children. And so how many people were there? We don't know hundred percent for sure, but how many ever people were there? All these people came up to a roadblock. They were being followed by the Egyptians who were trying to kill them. And so they came to a place where they had a sea in front of them and they had the Egyptian army coming toward them to kill them. And so Joshua was there when he saw Moses call out to God for help. And when God said, put your staff down and, and Moses obeyed and he took his staff and he put it in the water. And at that moment, then God parted the Red Sea and he made a way, a miraculous way for the Israelites, all those people and the children and the, and the families and the donkeys and the horses and the chariots and all these things that they had, God made a way for them to go over into the promised land. So that was God's purpose. He wanted them into the promised land, into Israel, and they were being chased. You know, anything that God has for you that is the promised land for you, that is a goal for you, that you know God has put in your heart, whatever that is, do you know the enemy's going to try to keep that from happening? Just like the Egyptian army coming toward the Israelites, they were trying to prevent them from getting into the promised land. And that's what the enemy does. He'll use people to try to keep you from where you're supposed to go. You know, I, I am currently... Uh, and I praise God and give him glory for this because there's no way I could do this in and of myself. But God has opened doors for me to preach his word around the world. Well, that is no surprise to me because God actually called me to that years ago in like 2004 at the altar. So now it's 2022 and since 2004, I knew my calling was to take God's word around the world. And in the last few years, I've been doing that. I've been on TV. But do you know back in 2004 when God called me to do that at the altar, I had, number one, no idea what it meant when he showed me in a vision. To to, he gave me a Bible and said, take his word around the world. I didn't know what it meant. 
I didn't know where I was supposed to go. I didn't know how to make it happen. And I learned, you know, we need to take steps of faith toward God, but God will open the doors and God will make it happen. God will open doors he wants opened and he will shut doors that he, need, he wants shut if you follow and trust in him. So Moses is following and trusting in God. And, he go, and the water parts, miraculously parts, for them to go through. And at any time, Moses could have given up and thrown in the towel and said, you know, this is impossible as your leader. We can't do it. It's too hard. You know, scripture says nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is too hard for God. He knows the plans for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper, prosper you and give you a hope and a future. God wants you to be successful in what he's called you to do. He has designed every person for a purpose. And Moses' purpose just so happened to be to lead. That was his purpose, to help the people get into the promised land. But see, then there came a time after they go across the water, the, the baton was going to pass from this great and fierce leader, Moses. The baton was now going to pass to Joshua. Now, I can only imagine how Joshua felt a little bit intimidated and inferior to Moses. I mean, can you imagine being an assistant to somebody who had done so many brilliant things? It'd be like being Einstein's assistant or something. Or, you know, think of whoever you want to come up with, uh, you know, someone that's done incredible things around the world. Mother Teresa, I think of her off the top of my head. And then the next person in line, the assistant, God is saying, now I want you to take their position. Now you're going to step into that. Well, when God asks you to do something, you can choose to say no. Or you can choose to say, God, okay, I don't know how I'm going to do that. I don't know what to do about that. But God, I'm going to trust you with it. And it's just little baby steps of faith every day. It's trusting in the Lord. And so Joshua is now going to be, Joshua lets Moses and Joshua both know now the baton is going to go to him. And you can just imagine some of the fear that Joshua felt in his gut. And God saw that. So God is going to speak to Joshua about that. And he's going to try to encourage him. He was experiencing fear. You know, he probably laid awake at night and thought, God, you know, I mean, how can I do anything for these people? I was just under this incredible leader that did all these things. And so scripture says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them, to the Israelites. So they'd crossed already the Red Sea. Now they're at another river, the Jordan River. And God is saying, now I'm, gonna, I'm going to help you now cross this other river. And he said, I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. When God says he's going to give you something, he will do it. If God says something and you keep following his plan, it will happen. Do you know the way you can miss God's plan? Do you know you can miss it? You can miss it, number one, by saying no. Number two, you can go away from God's plan. If Joshua would have been so intimidated and nervous about God's plan right here, he could have left the whole group and said, adios, I'm out of here. And he could have rejected God's plan. At any moment, I could reject God's plan for my life. Same with you. At any moment, you could leave your spouse. At any moment, you could, you could ignore your children. And heaven forbid we ever would ignore our children. I would never ignore my children. We should be there for our children. But we have a choice. We have a choice. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon. And from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. 
No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Do you know God is saying that to you? As I was with Moses and as I was with Joshua, I am with you. Do you know you are just as important to God as Joshua and Moses? Every single person is important to God. We know that because Jesus died for every single person. God loved us enough, every single person, to send his son, Jesus, into the world. So he's saying, I will be with you and I'll never leave you or forsake you. And he says, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. So he's saying, I promised it's going to happen. I will never leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. God is saying, allow my strength to dwell within you. In and of our own strength, we can do nothing. I mean, we might be able to do some things, but it's not going to be empowering. It's not going to be incredible. When we allow God to do something within us and we follow his plan, God is going to empower us and he's going to, he's going to make it happen through us. If we just depend on him, trust in him. Listen, we got to pray and believe for these things, no doubt. We got to take the steps of faith when God tells us to. Joshua could not have gone into the promised land if he didn't take that step. You have to take the step of faith in order to see the goodness of God. You have to take the step to see the, the, the full picture of what God wants to do. We have to take the step toward it. If we just laid in bed and did nothing and just prayed all the time and heard from God and he told us, you know, if, he, if jo Joshua would just lay in bed and say, you know, I've already got enough from you, God. I've already gone across the Red Sea. I've already seen that happen. I've already know the Ten Commandments. I already know this. I already know that. I've, I'm done. That's enough for me. He had the choice to make that choice, but he didn't. Now God is saying, step into it. And then God is saying again for the second time, he says, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. There's a key right there. If you want to be successful, key number one to the God's formula for success, number one is to be strong and courageous in the Lord. Wherever you go, you're going to be successful, he says. If you don't turn to the right, you don't turn to the left. That means if you keep your eyes and your mind and your focus on me, you're, you're going to be successful. The outcome is success. He says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. That means the word of God. Keep it in your mind. Keep it in your heart. He said, meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. I want to say that again. If you are careful to meditate and listen to the word of God and do what it says, according to God's word right here, you will be prosperous and successful. So you don't have to sit around and go, oh, God, am I going to be prosperous and successful in my ministry? No, that's not what the word of God says. He says, if you are strong and courageous, you don't look to the left, you don't look to the right, you keep focused on me and you keep going forward. Even during the times it seems like God is doing nothing, he is doing something. Sometimes we have to wait. And if we wait on the Lord, he's saying, I'm telling you right now, if you just keep going in me, you keep focused and you keep moving forward and keep trusting me, you will be prosperous and successful. He says, have I not commanded you? This is the third time he tells Joshua, he says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I know from reading the scripture that Joshua must have had a problem with fear. And he, and he probably had a problem with thinking he wasn't going to be successful. 
and he probably had a problem with being a little discouraged. That's why God tells him three times, be strong and courageous and don't be afraid. Do you know, fearing the Lord is, is wise. It's the beginning of wisdom, the fear of the Lord. But anything else, we should not fear. Now, why, now, you might say, well, why do we fear the Lord? Because you can go eternally into hell. So we should fear the Lord enough that he's going to judge every person is what that means. We should fear him enough and understand that we are created in the image of God. He made us. And he made us with a free will to choose him, to choose Jesus, his son, as our Lord and Savior. He gave us free will. Will. But we should fear God enough that we can spend eternally, eternity in hell, in damnation forever and ever and ever. We should fear that. That's the fear of the Lord. So that's the only fear we should have. Any other fears around us, we shouldn't fear. So Joshua ordered the, uh, the officers of the people. He said, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. So Joshua, boy, he was fired up after God talked to him. He was like, oh, get the provisions ready. Let's go. He told the officers and the leaders, let's go. We're getting ready. God said, we're going to do it. We're going to take possession of the land and it's going to happen. Do you know, this is so exciting. I had one of my... Uh, partners who graciously partners with my ministry and gives support and I'm grateful for all of those that are listening who helps this ministry take God's word around the world she would call me for prayer and she would call me regularly and I would pray with her and she said to me she said you know Dr. Marla I think you need to start thanking God every day for all the appointments he's making for you around the world to preach his word. She goes, I know the reality is that's not happening yet, but you need to thank him that you're traveling literally around the world and you thank him for all the appointments he's making for you. And I thought, you know, I like that. I like that. She's right. God has told me to take his word around the world. That's in alignment with God's will and God's plan. And so she said, I think you need to start saying it to your husband and start regularly saying, thank you, Lord, for the appointments you have for me around the world. And I started saying that. I told my husband about it and I said, I'm going to start saying that. Thank you, Lord, for all the appointments around the world. Do you know, ever since I've been saying that, now I'm going to be taking a group to Israel next September, which is one of my desires is to go to Israel and, and uh, I'm going to be speaking messages in Israel and we're going to film them for TV I'm taking a group, and if you're interested, you can email me. Go to my website. I'll put it on the screen. If you're interested in going with us, you can come with us. We're only going to take a small group of people, but you can sign up early. It will be a year from now. It's going to be almost a year from now. It would be September of 2023. I'd love for you to come with us. And so that's one of God's plans and his will for me is to take his good news around the world. And I thank you, Lord, more appointments are coming. I have another appointment coming up in a, in a town close to me, like four hours away to a women's group for a winter's banquet. And God's opening doors all over the place. He's opening doors all over the United States and around the world. I'm going to be preaching these messages in Israel. I mean, how amazing is that? I was invited into that place to do that. What is it God is telling you? You might be thinking, well, Dr. Marla, I don't have an international ministry calling. Maybe you don't, but the same principle that Joshua got and the same principle I'm using is the same principle for you. Let's say you work and you want a better position or you want to move up. Thank you, Lord. Start thanking him. Thank you, Lord, that I have favor from you, God. I'm strong and courageous in you, God, and you're going to open that opportunity and that door at the right time. Start speaking and praying and believing for whatever it is God has put in you according to God's will. What is strength and courage? It's the ability to control your fear and remain steady in difficult or challenging situations. 
Strength and courage is bravery. When adversity arises, you're going to have guts. You're going to have grit and perseverance. The next time you're faced with something that seems too much to handle, remember God's word to you. Be strong and courageous in the Lord. Same principle that happened to Joshua happened to David before he became the king. David was faced with a giant of problems because he was faced with a giant. But David had all kinds of problems arise. I mean, first he had the problem with Goliath, the giant. Then later he has a, a king after him. I mean, it doesn't get much worse than that when you have a king after you. King Saul came after David. And so David placed his confidence and his trust in the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3, 4 says, We are confident of all this because of our great trust in God through Christ. That is success principle number two. Your confidence and your trust is in God. It's not in the world. It's in God. David wasn't afraid to face the giant. He was absolutely unafraid of a more uh, experienced fighter, a bigger fighter, one that kept trying to intimidate him and, and talk negative to him. You know, David wasn't worried or concerned at all about beating Goliath. And do you know, at the time, King Saul even said to David that he was concerned that he couldn't beat the giant. David just stayed at peace. His, his confidence, his trust was in the Lord. And my favorite, one of my favorite set of verses in all the scripture, and if you listen to me regularly, you're going to hear me say this because I love it. Because David spoke to those giants. He spoke to the problem. And we need to speak to the problems in our life. And he said, you may come against me with javelin, sword, and spear. But here's the key. He said, I come against you in the name of the Lord God Almighty. You come against those problems in the name of the Lord God Almighty. Your confidence and trust is in the Lord. And you can go to bed at night and rest in peace. Success principle number three is you have to pray. Without prayer... Nothing is going to move forward like God would like it to happen without prayer. Prayer is a key. It's a force. Hezekiah got more years on his life, 15 more years to live when he was supposed to die because he prayed. Prayer is the key. Interestingly enough, I'm wearing a key on my, my necklace today. And there are keys. There are principles to success. This is a key. Huge key. You want to see your children turn around? You want to see all your family saved? You got to pray. Pray it into being. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, that means saying, God, I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. I mean, this place I'm sitting in, my studio here, I'm in this place because I prayed for God to open a place for us to go. This is a place that God opened. We prayed, we believed for it, and God opened it. But, you know, I, I've mentioned this before. I believe God has a headquarters for me, for Dr. Marlin Ministries. I believe he has a place for people to come, the brokenhearted and the hurting. I see a place where there's a bookstore for people to get resources. I see a place that we can film and, and uh, film messages for international ministry where people can come and they can sit and they can be a part of the filming process. And, and we can hold retreats and do all kinds of outreaches in this place. I see the place and I believe it's coming. I believe it's God's will for it to come in to being, but I'm praying about it. I have it in my heart. I believe God put it in my heart, but I'm saying, God, I'm praying that you'll have this come to pass. God, I pray in the right timing, you'll bring the resources and funds I need for this to come to pass to help people. 
You see, Hannah wouldn't have had a baby, Samuel, if she didn't pray. So pray. Success principle number four is to be thankful. As that scripture said, be thankful. In thanksgiving, bring your request before the Lord. Thankfulness is power. Being thankful isn't just for thanksgiving, and thanksgiving's coming up. Praise God. Scripture tells us to be thankful in everything in all circumstances. So when you find yourself overwhelmed by burdens and trouble and problems, start thanking God for something in the midst of that. Thank you, God, that you're never going to leave me. You're never going to forsake me. Thank you, God, that I'm alive, that I can breathe. I can talk. I can walk. Thank you, God, that you made the ocean. You made the stars. You made the heavens. I mean, you just start thanking him and thinking of things to thank him for. I mean, we see all kinds of people in scripture be thankful. But, you know, if we look at the lepers, there were 10 of them. Jesus healed all 10. 10 of them. I mean, leprosy was like a curse during New Testament times. It was a curse. I mean, if you had leprosy, you were locked away, put away. No one wanted to talk to you or be around you. Do you know God, Jesus healed all 10 and only one came back? God's formula for success. Number one, be strong and courageous. Number two, place your trust and confidence in the Lord. Number three, pray. And number four, be thankful. I have more success principles for you, but you're going to have to tune in another time to get those. But I want to close in a thankfulness prayer. Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing in every person that's listening in their lives. We thank you, Lord, that the building that you have for Dr. Marlin Ministries headquarters is coming. And God, we thank you because you, with you, all things are possible for all of us. And we give you praise and glory. We trust in you in Jesus' name. God bless you and I will see you soon. Hi, I'm Dr. Marla, and I'm so excited about my partners and for your help. I have some special gifts for you that you can have with a donation to the ministry of $50. You get this wonderful package. I have a scripture mug that says, The Lord is my high ridge, my stronghold, my deliverer. My God is my summit. You get a scripture mug. You get a marriage booklet that will empower your marriage. It's called Love the Most. And then you get a DVD set called Overcome Your Giants. You want to overcome some giants in your life. This DVD set that has several messages on it is for you. Or maybe you want to give this as a Christmas gift. I would love to get these items into your hands with a donation of $50. You can go to my website to get these. The gifts are on there. Or you can call our toll-free number that's on the screen. This helps us take God's word around the world and we appreciate your support so much. Thank you again for helping us take God's word around the world. DrMarla.org or call us toll free. Remember, with God, all things are possible for you.